Have you ever wondered how a newborn, without any instructions, learns to latch and feed? It's a question that leaves many in awe, and it's the perfect place to start our exploration of instinctual learning in children. Instinctual learning, as the name suggests, is the process by which children, or indeed any creature, develop skills and behaviours not through instruction or conscious thought, but rather through innate, instinctual processes. It's like a built-in software program ready to guide them through the complex world they've just entered. Now consider the senses. We have five of them. Sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell. Each one is a gateway to the world, a conduit through which children learn about their surroundings. But how do they learn to use these senses? How do they know to turn their heads towards a sound or to pull away from a hot surface? It all begins with instinctual learning. From the moment they're born, children are equipped with certain reflexes and responses. They instinctively turn their heads towards sounds, an action known as the orienting reflex. They instinctively withdraw from pain, a clear sign of the touch sense at work. They instinctively know to open their mouths and suckle, demonstrating the senses of taste and smell. But as they grow, these instinctual responses form the foundation for more complex behaviors. A baby who once turned towards sound will learn to recognize the sound of their mother's voice. A toddler who once withdrew from any touch will learn to distinguish between a gentle caress and a playful tickle. All this learning, all this growth, is built upon the foundation of instinctual learning. So, as we delve deeper into the fascinating world of sensory development, remember this, it all starts with instinct. It's an intricate dance between nature and nurture. A dance that begins the moment a child opens their eyes to the world for the first time. Keep in mind, the journey of sensory development is a fascinating one, filled with innate instincts and learned behaviours. Now before we move on, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment sharing your thoughts and most importantly, subscribe to our channel to journey more through this fascinating world of learning. Consider the case of baby Sarah, who, at just a few hours old, instinctively clutched her mother's finger. This simple act may seem trivial, but it's a profound testament to the power of the first sense we develop. Touch. From the moment we enter this world, our sense of touch becomes our initial communication channel. It's our first language, if you will, a language that doesn't rely on words but on sensations. Infants begin their sensory journey with touch using it as a tool to explore their environment. They feel the warmth of their mother's embrace, the softness of their cotton blanket, the roughness of dad's stubble. Each tactile sensation is a piece of the puzzle that forms their understanding of the world. Sarah, like all babies, was born with an inherent curiosity. She reached out to touch, to feel the world around her. With each touch, she was learning, associating different textures and temperatures with different experiences. The cool smoothness of a metal spoon, the prickly sensation of a woolen jumper, the comforting warmth of her mother's skin. These were all lessons teaching her about her surroundings. Her tiny hands were her little detectives, collecting data from every corner of her world. With every object she held, every surface she touched, she was building a library of sensations, a database of textures and temperatures. It was through touch that she began to distinguish between the safe and the unsafe, the familiar and the unfamiliar. Children, like Sarah, use their sense of touch to navigate their world. They learn to associate the softness of a pillow with comfort, the heat of a stove with danger. Touch becomes their guide, helping them form opinions, make decisions and understand their environment. Yet. Touch is not just about exploration, it's also about connection. The gentle caress of a parent, the playful tickle of a sibling, the comforting hold of a friend. These are all forms of communication that deepen our relationships and foster a sense of belonging. Through touch, Sarah began her journey of understanding and interacting with the world around her. And so, it is through touch that we all begin our lifelong journey of learning, connecting and experiencing. Now let's turn our attention to baby Jacob, who made a face the first time he tasted a lemon. Imagine this scenario. 
Jacob, a curious infant, reaches for a slice of lemon on the kitchen table. His tiny fingers grasp the fruit, and with a gleam in his eyes, he takes a bite. The sourness hits, and he scrunches up his face in surprise. This is Jacob's first encounter with a taste that's not milk or baby food. It's a learning experience, a lesson in the sense of taste. As children like Jacob grow, their palate develops. Each new food introduces a different taste, a new adventure. Sweet, sour, bitter, salty and umami. These are the five basic tastes that we humans can detect. And it's not just about food. The sense of taste helps children understand their environment. A child who licks a salty seashell or tastes the sweetness of a ripe berry learns about the world in a way that's immediate and visceral. Now let's talk about smell. If you've ever noticed a baby sniffing a new toy or a blanket, that's the sense of smell in action. Just like taste, smell is a powerful learning tool. It connects us to our environment and triggers emotional responses. Children learn to associate the smell of baking cookies with warmth and comfort, or the scent of a hospital with anxiety and fear. These two senses, taste and smell, are closely linked. Together they form what we call flavor. Flavor is a complex combination of taste and smell, texture and temperature. It's why a fresh apple tastes different from apple juice or apple pie. Early food preferences are formed through these sensory experiences. If a child is exposed to a variety of foods early on, they're more likely to enjoy a diverse diet as they grow older. If a child like Jacob only ever tastes sweet foods, he might be less inclined to enjoy vegetables or other less sweet options. By tasting and smelling, Jacob discovered a world of flavors and scents, each telling a different story. A story of discovery, of learning, and of the wonderful complexity of our world. Let's not forget about baby Emily, who startled at the sound of a dog barking. This initial reaction was a clear demonstration of her developing sense of hearing. It's quite the journey, really, when you think about how an infant's sense of hearing evolves. From the moment of birth, a baby's ears are open to a symphony of sounds. The soft lullaby of a mother, the deep timbre of a father's voice, the pitter-patter of rain against a window, even the hum of a washing machine. All these sounds, though mundane to us, are new and exciting to a newborn. Our case study, Emily, was no exception. As weeks turned into months, the cacophony of sounds around her started making sense. The dog's bark that once startled her now made her giggle. She began to recognize the comforting voice of her mother and the playful tone of her father. This is the beauty of the sense of hearing. It not only allows children to recognize different sounds, but also helps them understand the emotions behind those sounds. A loud, abrupt sound might signal danger, while a soft, soothing voice often means comfort and safety. The role of hearing in language acquisition is indeed profound. It is how Emily started to learn her first words. She listened, she mimicked, she practiced. She heard the joy in her parents' voices when she said Mama and Dada for the first time. She heard the laughter of her siblings and soon joined in. Hearing, you see, is not just about the ears, it involves the brain as well. It's a complex process where sound waves are converted into electrical signals that the brain interprets. It's through this intricate process that Emily, like all children, begins to communicate with the world around her. Through hearing, Emily began to decipher the sounds of life, from understanding emotions to learning words. So, let's lend an ear to the next part of our journey as we explore the fascinating world of sight, the fourth sense in our series on instinctual learning. Scene script. Last but not least, meet baby Ethan, who couldn't take his eyes off the colourful mobile hanging above his crib. In the grand theatre of life, the sense of sight is the director, choreographer and main performer. It's through sight the children, like our little Ethan here, begin to recognize faces, understand emotions, and explore their surroundings. Imagine being a newborn, opening your eyes for the first time to a world of lights and shadows, shapes and movements. At birth, a baby's vision is quite blurry and limited to shades of black, white and grey. Over the first few weeks, their sight begins to develop, and they start to see colors, particularly reds and greens. As the weeks turn into months, Ethan's focus improves and he begins to recognize familiar faces, especially those of his parents. The sight of a mother's smile or a father's gentle gaze becomes a source of comfort and security. This is when babies start to understand emotions. 
linking the visual cues they see to the feelings they evoke. Around the same time, Ethan's depth perception and hand-eye coordination start to develop. He reaches out for the mobile hanging above his crib, trying to grasp the colourful figures. This marks the beginning of his exploration of the world around him. By the time Ethan is a year old, his sight is almost as good as an adult's. He can recognise people and objects from a distance, he can focus on moving objects, and he's starting to understand spatial relationships. Sight is not just about seeing, it's about understanding, learning and exploring. It's about making connections between what we see and what we know. It's about recognising the familiar and being curious about the unknown. For a child, every day is a discovery. Every moment an adventure and every sight a new chapter in the story of their life. And as they grow, so does their world, expanding with every new thing they see and every new place they explore. Through sight, Ethan started to visually make sense of the world, a crucial step in his overall development. Parents play a pivotal role in their children's sensory development. As the architects of their child's world, parents are instrumental in shaping the sensory experiences their children encounter. From the warmth of a comforting cuddle to the exciting colours of a playroom, every interaction contributes to a child's sensory development. One of the ways parents can support their children's sensory development is through various activities and experiences. For example, a simple trip to the park can be a sensory feast for a child. The rustle of leaves underfoot, the smell of fresh grass, the sight of colourful flowers. All these stimuli engage a child's senses and help them understand the world around them. Moreover, parents can foster sensory development through play. Playtime is not just fun and games, it's a crucial part of a child's learning process. Creative activities like painting, moulding clay or building sandcastles can stimulate a child's touch sense. Musical activities enhance their hearing, while cooking together can engage their sense of taste and smell. Also, the home environment plays a significant role in sensory development. A stimulating environment filled with diverse textures, sounds and colours can provide countless opportunities for sensory exploration. From a soft carpet to a shiny mirror, each object in a child's environment can contribute to their sensory understanding. However, it's important to remember that sensory development is not a race. Each child is unique, and their sensory development will follow its own pace. As parents, it's our job to provide the opportunities and experiences that will aid this process. But it's the child who will ultimately make sense of their sensory world. The key is balance. While it's important to provide sensory stimuli, it's equally important to give children quiet time to process these experiences. Sensory overload can be overwhelming, so it's crucial to find a balance that suits your child's individual needs. In conclusion, parents are not just bystanders in their child's sensory development. They are active participants, providing the stimuli, experiences and support that their child needs to navigate the sensory world. As parents, you are your child's first teacher, guiding them as they navigate the sensory world. The journey of sensory development in children is indeed a remarkable one. It's like watching a little sapling grow into a majestic tree, unfurling its leaves one sense at a time. We started our jaunt with instinctual learning, that innate knowledge that children possess, guiding their actions and reactions as they navigate the world. It's the unseen compass that directs their path, leading them towards the development of their senses. The first contact they make with the world is through touch. The sense of touch is their earliest form of communication. It's through this tactile exploration they discover the warmth of a mother's embrace, the coolness of a marble floor, or the prickliness of a woolen sweater. Then we moved on to the senses of taste and smell, the conjoined twins of sensory perception. From the first taste of mother's milk to the first whiff of a blooming rose, these senses introduce children to a world of flavours and scents. A sensory banquet, if you will. The sense of hearing, like a symphony conductor, orchestrates their understanding of their surroundings. It's through hearing they learn to distinguish between the melodious lullaby of their mother and the cacophony of a bustling market. The sense of sight, the crowning glory of the senses, paints the world in its true colours. 
It's through sight that they learn to associate the comforting face of their parents with safety and security. And how can we forget the crucial role parents play in this sensory symphony? They are the conductors guiding their child's senses, nurturing their curiosity and fostering their understanding of the world. They are the ones who hold the child's hand as they take their first sensory steps. In conclusion, sensory development in children is a complex yet beautiful process. It's a journey that unfolds over time, shaped by instinctual learning and guided by the loving hand of parents. Remember, every child's sensory journey is unique and as caregivers, you have the privilege of supporting them through this incredible process.